Hi, my name is Rashida Dow from Rashida's on the Loose, and I'm here today with Liz Jones, who took a career break and is now traveling through Southeast Asia. Okay. For record planning tips, hit the subscribe button and look in the description below for other related blogs and videos. Hi, Liz. Hey, Rashida. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. All right. Where are you now? I am Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Okay, and how long have you been there? I actually just touched down this morning. Okay. And it's now nighttime. <laughs> so day one. Day one. And where were you before Kuala Lumpur? Um, before this, I was in Thailand. Um, I spent a month there and kind of bounced around. Okay. Okay. And did you like that? Um, I did. I did. I feel like I got to see the breadth of the, uh, of the country, um, which is pretty cool because like, it's all different. So it was pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's back up and rewind and take okay. it back. How you got to you being in Kuala Lumpur and Thailand and all over the place. Um, you're on a career break, right? Mm -hmm. And how did you decide to take one? So I was at Uber for um, this February, what I actually made five years. Um, I held various different roles um, and I found myself getting to a point where I was, you know, I was no longer sort of, I felt like I wasn't sort of aligned with the goals. I wasn't really excited about the work I was doing anymore. And I was kind of just, I felt like I was plateauing. Um, and then I'll never forget like one day, so I was on a remote team, so I could sort of work from home. And one day I was working from home and one of my close friends who also worked at Uber um, had like FaceTime me because she was on the West Coast and, you know, your friends, they can kind of like see through you. And she's just like, how are you doing? I was like, I'm good. And she's like, no, how are you really doing? And then I was like, I'm unhappy. Like, I just feel stuck. I don't feel like I'm living my purpose. And I felt like I was just going through the motions. and. Um, I had been looking at other roles and thinking about going to other tech companies. And I was just telling her, like, I could apply to other companies, but I feel like it would be the same thing. And so I just felt really stuck. Um, and then she was just kind of like, well, you've always loved to travel. Like, why don't you quit and like go somewhere cheap, like Southeast Asia and travel? And I was like, at first it sounded bizarre. Right. Um, and we had a mutual friend and she's just like, they did it. Like, she's like, why don't you consider that? Um, and I was Hmm, I never thought about that. Um, and so really it was just being at a place feeling stuck. Um, you're there, you're at Uber, you're at a job, or you're at a company that a lot of people might strive for. What kind of emotions did you go through at the idea of leaving this job for the uncertainty of a career break? I was okay with leaving only because like I knew like, it was my first job out of college. I held various different roles. I lived in various different cities and I felt like I had seen Uber go from like a startup to like a company that IPO'd. So it wasn't, it wasn't like, oh my God, you're leaving the best like, you know, company in the world. And like, I kind of felt like, like there is a point where like it's time to go, you know, because if you are no longer motivated and stuff, like eventually you're going to become a detractor and like, that's not healthy. It doesn't matter what company you're at. So I didn't feel the pressure of like, Oh my God, why are you leaving Uber? It was like, Uber's dope. I learned a lot. It taught me everything I know. And now I need to go somewhere else and rock out. Um, so I was okay with <laughs> like leaving was totally fine. Um, and then also sometimes company culture changes and when you're no longer aligned, then also <laughs> it's time. How long did you know that you wanted to leave before you actually left? How long did it take from knowing you wanted to take a break to actually leaving? Like a um, career break, you had, your, your friend called, you had the idea. How long did you plan yeah. I think that happened around September and I, my equity, and then, so my equity was going to fully vest in like November. And so like December was the date I was putting in my December. And I really wanted to, I wanted to save too. So I was like, let me, you know, go to the end of the year. And then it got to a point where I was like, I can't do this anymore. I'm done right after the, <laughs> right after this. Um, so yeah, so I guess like maybe a month. Okay, so that's pretty quick. 
pretty. I didn't necessarily know that I wanted to leave. Hmm. So I started applying to different roles and like, I'm kind of a like trust the universe person. And I was like, I applied to like two promotion positions. I was like, okay, if I don't get them, like I'm going to take it as a sign. Like it's time to pivot. And so I didn't get them. And then I, so I have a, um, there's like one of my favorite books. It's called Good to Great by Jim Collins. And he has like the hedgehog, hedgehog concept. And like when I had did that, framework for myself it kind of asks three questions like what are you passionate about um what are you like where's your skill set and then like how can you turn that into income and like the middle is kind of the sweet spot so I guess once I realized that like even if I took another role that like I still wouldn't be fulfilled I knew it was time to go so um I don't know that didn't answer your question you asked about timeline so I think once I so I use so for those who don't know like when you work in tech for most tech companies like you get sort of equity which is like stock in the company right and so I knew like once my equity vested I was like I'm cashing out (laughs) so that was kind of my um my like I knew once that um threshold came I was gonna Chuck the decent quick. Okay, so you're pretty, you're early in your career. You said this was your first job out of college. What are you planning on doing when this journey is over? You know, it's funny, like you have a plan and then, you know, things happen and that kind of shift. So when I first, when this first, this idea first like came about, it was really just about like, hey, like I want to be creative and like I want to tell black stories and I've always been really passionate about travel and like more people of color traveling, knowing what the world looks like and having access. So I thought I was going to quit. I was going to, you know, be a travel blogger. And then the end of the year became hard personally. And then I was like, wait a minute, this trip needs to be an eat, pray, love. And so in the beginning, when I first got here, like I didn't care about content and stuff. Um, and then I developed this like love hate relationship because I was like, everyone's Instagram makes this look so easy and so fun. And I was like, this is hard. <laughs> um, and, and so I kind of was like, I don't know that I want to be a travel blogger. Um, so I say that to say, that. <laughs> um, I don't know, because initially I thought like, again, like I was going to do sort of travel content. And now I'm kind of like, well, I feel really disconnected from tech and I still like love tech. So like a part of me, and it's also like weird to be like, you know, not having a source of income. So you're like, eventually this money is going to run out. Um, And so I have already been thinking about like, what am I, you know, what am I going to do? But um, I don't know. I'm, In my mind, when I started the journey, I was like, I'm going to trust the process, like, you know, spend some time self-discovery, see who I bump into, see what I, you know, see, just kind of just trust the journey. Um, So that's a long-winded way of saying, like, I don't know. I'm kind of open to, I don't know what sort of comes of this, but um, I don't know. It is, it is weird, like just traveling though, and like not working or like not being productive and the way we sort of think of productivity. Um, but I don't know. Cause there's also a part of me that's like, Oh, I'm really afraid to go back to like a traditional job. I'm really, I'm like, maybe I'll just do like contractor roles and like save money and like leave the country again. Or maybe I'll be a flight attendant. Like I'm really kind of, there's a part of me that's like, I don't know about this nine to five again, but there's a part of me that's like, I kind of miss Tech, cult, tech culture, like maybe I'll just, you know, travel and work. So I don't really know. Um, you guys will have to stay tuned. <laughs> okay, so you talked about how hard it is to um, create when you're traveling. Um, and I hear that from a lot of people who had plans like you. They want to leave and they want to like, they, they either want to create or within a few weeks of traveling, they feel guilty about not being productive. And that's something I think that it's really great to hear you say because other people can be more cognizant of it when they start their own trip. If you've been producing for years, it's really hard to get off that track and say like, it's okay if I don't create in this moment. And it's okay if I don't produce anything. And I'm not like, it it is not attached or some people attach it to who they are, their self-worth in a way that can become unhealthy because if they're not doing something, 
they're nothing, you know. Right. No, not all the time. And not everyone thinks like that, but it, it comes up frequently. Um, and so it's really great to hear that, you know, you're early in your journey, but you thought about it and like stepped back and said that you don't need to do that because you can get caught up in that trap of doing things. Okay. Yeah. So maybe nine to five, maybe not. We'll see what happens. We'll, we'll follow you along on Instagram, right? Yes. On Instagram, Liz on the go. <laughs> Why did you start your journey in Thailand? Why Thailand? Um, So we actually had, so I have a, so me and my friend who like threw this idea out there, we had a mutual friend actually, Ime Umo. If you guys aren't following him, you should. He is the drone god. (laughs) Um, But we met him at Afrotech um, like a year before. And like, he was actually the first person I ever met that, well, black person that was like, I'm quitting. I'm going to travel and figure it out. Um, and he started kind of, um, and he spent time in Thailand. And my friend was like, hey, like, why don't you do t- Thailand like he did? She's like, it's really, you know, the cost of living is really cheap. Um, there are a lot of backpackers and it's really safe. And so I think those were the, well, I think one part of that, and I mentioned him to say, I think like a lot of time, like we're afraid to do things until like someone you know has done it, right? Or someone you trust has done it, right? And it's like, okay, like, right he did it um and so you know I was like okay word of mouth um someone else that I know has done this and then I just started doing my research um and I guess the three things was like Thailand was cheap um it was safe and had a really big sort of backpacker um culture um and so I think one thing that I did initially was just like, I just started Googling. Like I was like black women who quit their jobs to travel the world or like black women who solo travel. Um, and Southeast Asia kept like coming up um, a lot. So that's why I started. Um, it's perfect. It's perfect. Um, when did you start solo traveling? I mean, like, in life. Um, so I guess technically in college, um, first I did a sort of group trip. So it was like a professor and a bunch of students and that was for a month. I was like, let me test out travel. (laughs) Um, and then after that I did a international, we call them co-ops. It was like an internship in South Africa. And what year was that? I guess I was like a junior in college and yeah, I was there for four months. Um, it's interesting though, because I don't think about that as solo travel, but it kind of was. Um, and then after that, years later, as an adult, I felt like afraid to solo travel. So um, last year, it was actually one of my goals to solo tra- like to do a solo travel trip because I had started traveling with friends. But I was like, I'm afraid to kind of solo travel, although I've done this before. Um, and now I here I am on like the solo trip. <laughs> but- <laughs> so how did you get over that hump of like? going from like eh, solo travel to like okay I'm gonna do it for three months I think when you're at a rock bottom like you just gotta take a risk and it was like life was like a rock bottom I was like unhappy with work personally unhappy and it's like you can't be depressed anxious all these things like something gotta change so I was just like and it was like travel was gonna be the answer so it was like sis you just gotta jump in <laughs> and kind of do it um and like I think I just read like so many like people other people that I read who started off like doing solo travel, it's like, oh, I'm gonna do it for three months or six months, have like done it for like a year or been doing it for like three years and like none of them turned back. And so, and all of them had at least one like even safety scare, but they were like, that doesn't stop you. And like, so I was like, it's fine. Like, like I can do this. Um, other black women have done this and it's changed their lives. So I'm gonna. <laughs> Take a shot at me. What are the hard parts of this journey for you? That's a good question. What are the hard parts? Um, well, I don't know if other people would think. One thing that's been challenging for me is, um, or frustrating, which I don't know if that's your question, but I think that like we, like when you see it on Instagram, you just see these like photo ops, right? And you're just like, Okay, number one, they're expensive. They're like $50. So like if you're spending, if in your mind, you're, you know, your thing to do for the day is a $50 photo op thing, it's like, 
that's expensive. Wait a minute. That's not a part of this frugal <laughs> budget travel that I'm doing. Um, and then for me, it just felt really inauthentic. Um, like a lot of these places where you see Instagram and take these beautiful photos are like touristy things, right? Like locals are not doing that, right? Or you're, you know, you're driving, you know, an hour away to like do this thing. And like, so for me, it was challenging because I'm like, but wait, I'm supposed to do this, right? Like if I'm in Kuala Lumpur, I need to go to the Batu caves, right? Because that's what you do, right? But it's like, that doesn't feel like I just want to go chill with the locals and like eat. I don't know, like rice and trent or like whatever like and so it was kind of like an internal battle of being like are you going to be authentic or like are you going to you know flex for the gram right or you know are you going to take it up be present or are you going to be thinking about this content you're doing and so that was more of an internal struggle but like really a struggle for me and then it's also like i was like i want to delete instagram but i'm like but I've connected with so many people and like I learned so much. So I think that was one piece. I think also the like, you know, there are different types of travelers, right? Like there are frugal travelers, backpackers. There are people who do luxury travel. There are people who do like short term, right? Like, am I going to stay in this country for a month or am I going to do four countries in a month? Right. And so I didn't really think about all of that. And so, you know, when you're backpacking, like it's a lot, like you're like packing unpacking it's kind of clean but it's kind of not clean and then you don't have your own personal space um and it becomes draining right um but then it's like okay you can you know live like airbnb life but now you are doubling your expenses or maybe tripling right and so just like things that you didn't even think about um so now you have to you know make these sort of trade-offs um yeah. And in my mind, I was, you know, I, I think in my first month, I went from like Bangkok to Chiang Mai to Chiang Rai to Phuket to Phi Phi to Koh Lanta to Krabi. I'm like all that in a month. And it's like, that's draining carrying this 65 liter backpack. <laughs> like, why didn't somebody tell me this was not sustainable? <laughs> I'm laughing because it is not sustainable, y'all. It is draining. <laughs> got about a month of like move, 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 move. And then you're going to want like to nap for a week. I had so many times where I was like, like I got to Madrid and I just stayed in bed for four days. Like, I just can't, I can't anymore. I, I can't go. Between like the jet lag and all the others, I can't, I can't go anymore. Yeah. And the thing is that it's not, I think it's just like, no one's talking about it, right? Like, because, and, or like, as I even, even started to learn more about you or like other people, I'm like, wait a minute, they had Airbnbs or like they stayed in a place for a month. Or like, even as I joke with like one of my Instagram friends and she's just like, I knew you wasn't going to like the hospital life. And I'm like, sis, why you didn't tell me? She's like, you have to learn for yourself. Right. And it's just kind of like, I think that's another thing. Like, I just don't think a lot of people, we're doing like these photos and these great captions, but like people aren't really like just painting the whole picture. And it's, I mean, the journey has been amazing. Like, it's amazing. I got the hang of it. I'm one month in, but I think, like, we definitely need more transparency around, like, yes, the whole yes. journey. <laughs> um, and I, I've talked to a lot of women who are really transparent about that part of it in that um, it looks good on camera. And it, when your friends hear that you're doing it, it sounds really romantic because you ain't going to work every day. And people are like, oh, every <laughs> time because you, you ain't clocking in, right? And it, I would say like somewhere between 85 and 90% of it was just amazing. But you've really got to know yourself and you've got to know what you like and what you don't like. And sometimes it just means learning it on that journey for the first six months, I think, maybe more. Nope, maybe eight months. I was go, 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 go. Around month eight, I was like, I need to sit my ass down or go home. Like I, I can't anymore like I try I, I would go to countries and like go and not want to leave the Airbnb so it's like why am I here why did I pay to come here if I'm so tired from all of the moving around and the unpacking or even if you don't unpack it's still kind of like getting through immigration in a new country getting the bus or a train or whatever checking in dealing with the Airbnb it, it can be so much that unless you really love it. And I think some people, if you have someone else to help with a journey, it can take a little bit off of that, a little um, bit of the, the moving around and the stress off of your shoulders. But for me, it was like around month eight, I was like, I'm going to rent a place for three months. Cause there's like, <laughs> that's it. 
if I have to, if I have to leave and come back, I mean, if I have to keep moving around like I'm doing now, because I, I wanted to see so many countries, right? So if I keep moving around like I'm doing, I'm, it's not yeah. burning out. <laughs> and it's like, who, who ever heard of burning out on vacation, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that I, I learned was that um, I had to stop looking at it like I was on vacation because for me, vacation had this certain connotation. Like you go out, you do all these things you want to do, you sleep a little bit and then you go home. Um, but that what I'm, I'm traveling for a year. Like, this is not a vacation, this is my life. And so if, if at home I would do, have one day a week where I would do absolutely nothing, I had to give myself permission to do that as well. Like while I'm traveling, I have to give myself permission to be who I authentically am, not who I want to be while I'm on vacation. because. It, it's not, to your point, it's not sustainable to um, have an I- idea of what you should be doing, but separate from what you really want to do, because this is your real life and you have, there's nothing you have to do. So you might as well make it like ideal for you. Right. So yeah, that was one of the struggles and things I learned along the way. I'm being transparent. <laughs> um, all right. So where else do you plan on going in Southeast Asia? Yeah, so I'm in Malaysia right now. I'm going to fly to Bali in a few weeks, uh, meet up with my friends. Uh, one of my friends is doing her 30th there. And then I don't have a plan after that, but I plan to hit up Singapore, Vietnam, and the Philippines um, for sure. And then I've been told I should also do Cambodia and Laos. So hopefully I'll get to all of those, but um, yeah. Okay, cool. What advice would you give someone who was considering a break like this? What advice would I give them? Hmm, that's a really great question. Um, I think firstly is like thinking about your why, right? Um, it's another book I love, which is start with why. So, you know, kind of like, what's your why? Like, why do you want to do this, right? Like, do you need a eat, pray, love, right? Like, is this about, you know, personal improvement, right? Is it that you love to travel? Um, you know, sort of what's your why, you know, and then kind of like, well, you know, how long do you want to do this, right? Is this like, oh, I just want to do three months, six months, a year. Do I want this to be a break or is this more long-term, right? And I don't necessarily think like, I mean, I know I quit, but like everyone doesn't necessarily have to quit, right? Like, is there a way where you can leverage medical leave or you can leverage a sabbatical or like, you know, what policies does your company have or like, um, you know, also make sure you kind of plan properly, right? Like, you know, do your research, right? Like, or, you know, and based on like what's important to you, right? Like what, you know, where are you going to go? What, you know, what budget do you need? Um, And I think another really important one is like, what kind of traveler are you? Which maybe for me that I think that was my biggest blind spot because I planned like a backpacker, but I really think I'm like a luxury travel girl. Like I want an Airbnb and like all these things, but like that was not in my planning. In my planning, like I was a backpacker and in practice, I'm like, I'm so grateful I did this because it's great. Like I learned so much, but like, I am not a backpacker. (laughs) um, And so again, like you don't really think about these things, but they kind of matter because based on what you want, like your budget needs to be different or, you know, all those things. So I think I would think about, um, I think those are the things I would sort of think through. Okay. So moving forward, are you gifting yourself more Airbnbs or are you going back to hostels? Ah, That's a great question. (laughs) So I said for month two, I'm gifting myself. So I have this Airbnb for a week and a half in Malaysia. And then me and my friends have a really posh villa. And then I was like, I'm gonna try to Airbnb it out. After that, month three, I'll probably revisit. Like if I'm gonna hop to those countries, it might be a mix. Um, But, you know, to your point earlier, I'm like, you know, if I'm gonna do this, like it needs to be enjoyable as well, right? You know, if you're gonna be in host well miserable is not the right word but it's just like gift yourself like the lifestyle you like um so this month we're balling out i don't know about month three but all right good to know all right let's talk real quick about packing did you just bring your backpack or do you have other stuff as well 
Um, I have two book bags. Like I have a big 65 liter backpack Mm -hmm. and then I have like a sort of carry on regular book bag. Okay. For three months of travel, do you, how do you feel about what you pack? Did you underpack, overpack, pack perfectly? Failed. (laughs) Failed. That's why I need to ask. Most people do. Failed. Um, Yeah. Shout out to the GOAT. One of my favorite um, travel bloggers, Hey Sierra. Um, Airbnb actually just recognized her. But it's interesting, like, the things that, like, other backpackers tell you to bring. It's like, yup, they are right on point. And the stuff that you don't listen to, it's like, they told you. Um, But definitely, I overpacked for one. Um, But I'm like, oh, I'm a newbie. Okay. Um, something I heard someone else say is like, oh, every country they go to, they start to throw things away. I started throwing things away after my first Airbnb. Uh, I mean, my first hostel, every city I do throw things away. Um, I think also like in your mind, you pack for these photo ops, but like, did you pack for the weather? (laughs) Like, like (laughs) it was hot. And I was like, wow, like, like, this is not the right material. I don't know. Like, and that's another, it's weird. Like they, like they also, the clothes in other countries are so cheap. Like if I had to redo it, I was like, I wouldn't have bought anything because I could have bought a whole wardrobe in Thailand. The clothing would have been perfect for the weather and I would have paid a quarter of the price. <laughs> um, so that's one cool thing to do. Like buy the clothes when you get to the country. It's going to be like $2, $4, $7. It's going to be really everybody. everybody. Uh, doesn't work for everybody? It doesn't work for everybody. Because some people, I know people who had a really hard time finding clothes in Thailand, especially bigger women had a really hard time finding clothes in Thailand. But if you even suspect at all it can work for you, if it's a country you've been to before, if you're going back, like those insane, bring like a couple pairs of shoes. Clo- I, I usually bring clothes for like three days. And then anything else I need, I just get there. No, I wasn't doing that in the beginning of my journey. <laughs> Because I would I'd be traveling like, what the fuck is this suitcase so heavy? Like, what am I doing with my life? What is right. going on? Who needs yeah. all this? Right. And then it got to a point where I couldn't buy things in other countries because there was no room in my suitcase. So I started doing it the other way around, coming with an empty suitcase and going back home with a fuller one. So Yeah. Yeah. I think another thing too is like the culture of the country. So like full disclaimer, like I love a crop top and like a little dress and like, you know, Thailand, like Thai people are kind of conservative and like modest. Right. And so it was like, I felt kind of out of place wearing a crop top every day. Right. And so I think that's another thing, like, you know, like definitely do your research on the culture of the country. I mean, you can dress however you want. Right. But like, you don't want to like stand out. Um, so unless you do, unless you do, unless you do, you do want to stand out, you know, um, <laughs> But your crop tops worked when you were in the islands, right? And they'll work in the Philippines, right? Like when you, if you want to go to beachy places, you know, yeah. they're a little bit more relaxed out there. Right. Except when you only packed crop tops, then what? <laughs> pack crop tops. Then what? Yeah. So what I, I tend to do also is um, see what I can give away when I'm leaving. So if I brought a shirt, like from Target t-shirt that like, I am not madly in love with. You know, we all have our our things that spark joy and a lot of things spark joy for me. But I'll be like, okay, if I bought something here, can I give this, leave it in the Airbnb? Not like leaving things like a pile of trash, but like, is there someone who works in the building who might want this, watching, that kind of thing so that you can balance taking things in, but also leaving things behind. So, yeah. Um, Should I share like things that I did pack that have been really useful? <laughs> that would be great. Um, yeah, so definitely. So I debated between like backpack and suitcase, and I saw like time and time again, like pack a backpack, which was very new for me. Like I'm like, I travel with suitcases in the US, right? But I heard like, you no, know, you know, you may be getting on like boats or little boats, or like maybe the streets will be flooded or like different things. And it's just like a backpack is just easy. So the Osprey, Osprey is a great brand um I have I mean 65 liters is a lot you don't need that much but like 
the backpacks are truly amazing. And even they're really heavy, but like the way they are made, like you don't feel it. And it is really easy when you're like moving all around. Um, what other things? Bose headphones, noise canceling headphones. Sounds like such a simple thing, but like for the flights, they're amazing. Even if you're like in a hostel where like someone's snoring or whatever, just like my headphones are great. It lets me listen to music, tune people out, get those noise canceling headphones, um, get universal plugs. Um, Amazon, Amazon will be your best friend. Amazon has everything, plugs, locks, all those things. Um, Switch gears just for a little bit. Um, so you spent almost five years at Uber watching it go from startup. You watched it through the IPO. Um, lots of experiences in there. What, um, what's your number one lesson from that time in your life? I think the first one, um, Bose, um, I don't know if you guys know, Bose my St. John, um, but it's a quote that she said that has always kind of resonated, which is like, bring your whole self to work. Um, I think before working at Uber, like, you know, especially being like black and like predominantly white spaces, like, you know, you feel pressure to like code switch, right? Or like sort of be inauthentic. And I felt like Uber was the first place where I could just like be me. Um, and I felt like being me is actually like how I soared, right? Like, um, and I know that can be like hard as a black woman and like, you know, spaces that are not mostly black, but like, I don't know. I feel very strongly about bringing your whole self to work. Um, and so I would definitely say that, um, another one I think, which is like, always start with a problem. I think like sometimes we want to just like create or like do stuff or like work on projects. And it's like, you know, I'll never forget a manager told me that, um, gave me this bit of advice, which is like, you know, problem solution impact. So like, what is the problem that you're trying to solve for? Like, what is the solution? And then like, what impact is that going to make? So, and I think that's relevant, like for anything, for when you're curating content or like working on a project or like anything you're doing in life, it's like always be thinking about like, what is the problem that you're solving for the end user? Um, then I think the last one is just like, we used to have this cultural value called like always be hustling. Um, I think that like, <laughs> she is shaking her head. Um, I think, I think, or I guess I would say like failing fast. I think like, you know, I love that at Uber, like you could try anything, right? It's like, you know, fail fast, right? Like if you think that's a good idea, like try it. Like, I think a lot of time, like we will let being a perfectionist or kind of like overthinking things make us not start and it's just like start start somewhere start anywhere it's okay like if you fail like you know you don't fail you only learn it's like you know you'll pivot you'll fix it but just like fail fast and just like always be hustling like always go above and beyond like always do more than your job title like those are the people who get promoted the people who are doing the job they want before they have the title um you know, my homegirl said the old time, we did a lot of free work at Uber because you did, right? Like, if you wanted to be recognized, like, you better be working on that project on and off the clock, although that may not be good. <laughs> but um, those are some things that... Okay. All right. Now, as a, a former lawyer at the company, I hear fail fast. I'm like, no, 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 Come, call me. Let's let's talk about your plans. Um, but I definitely know what you mean about always be hustling, about failing fast. But when you talk about working on and off the clock, what I hear that leading to is a lack of work life balance. Did you feel oh, for sure? Yeah. I had zero work life balance. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, I might be able to sustain that fresh out of college, but you know. 20 something years out, like <laughs> it's really hard to sustain that hustle culture. And so I think that if you, if you want to take Liz's advice and hustle, 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 fail fast, start early. Like, because if you're going to have zero work-life balance, the time to do that is in your twenties, your early thirties, like having zero work-life balance in your forties is not, not, don't do that. Don't do that because yeah. That. I might be taking that back. Don't, don't, don't not have, have, have work like that. I am not promoting. <laughs> um, that's funny. I actually had a manager who was like, that was one of my B's. He was like, you don't have any work like that. And I was like, what's wrong with that? <laughs> no guys have work like balance, please. Do you think that if you had more work life balance, you wouldn't be on this career break right now? Um, 
like, no, because like when I love, if, I think whenever you love what you, that maybe that's not true for everyone, but like when you love what you do, like you want to do it all the time. <laughs> so a work-life balance issue was a Liz issue, not yeah. a job issue. Okay. Really a Liz issue. Okay. So I could see how it would be really frust- frustrating right now to not be failing fast. <laughs> Honestly, the crazy thing though is you start to get used to it, right? Like you start to literally the you know like the lifestyle will force you to get used to it, and then you start to be like, oh wait, it's okay, like to just enjoy being on this boat because like you're like happier when you're in nature and just listening to the sound of water, like that's okay. <laughs> Within the Liz universe, the Liz Jones biosphere what were the hurdles between you and going on a career break the hurdles when you started, there was your job there was where you live what did you have to adjust what did you have to do to make this change once I decided I was going to make the change <clears throat> um the hurdles I feel like there wasn't a lot of hurdles um but um, um, I mean, I think first was like being really confident in your decision, right? I think like, you know, you have to know that like, I think before you even like tell anyone, like, cause you need to know, like people might, like, you don't know how people are going to react. Like, like, are they going to talk you out of it? Are they going to try to scare you? You know? And so I think firstly, it's like getting mentally like like knowing like, yep, this is my decision. Like I'm confident. I did my research. Like I have the funds. I'm not afraid. Like, so I think like, um, like I said, I think I spent weeks just like studying other people who did it, like reading blogs, reading every Instagram post of like certain people to really understand like, okay, like what does this entail? Um, but you know, once you figure out what the budget is and then, you know, you make sure you have that budgeted once you, you know, read all the things in terms of like what you need to pack, you know, you start to buy those things. I think, um, I, I, re- I think studying people who have done it has been key. Little things like, you know, what's the right card to buy so you're not charged any international fee plug. It's the um, Charles Schwab um, card, yes. Yes. right? Um, like, uh, Fee-free checking. I recommend it to everybody. I'll put a link, right. <laughs> link to everything. Liz said in the description, and I'm going to ask her for more of her favorite books because she already gave us two, so I know she has more. So that'll all be <laughs> below. Um, yeah, but like things like that, that, you know, again, blind spots, like things you wouldn't even think of. Um, I think like you're only going to learn it from like people who have like done this. Um, so I think, you know, that preparation, so budgeting, the actual like buying the stuff and I think mindset once I had those three things then it was like cool I'm telling everybody let me let my parents know let me let my job know and then like let me just start putting it out there um in the universe but I didn't have a lot of hurdles I already I had lived in Philly and then in July I didn't renew my lease because I knew I wanted to pivot like I knew I needed to move to another city or like a new company and so I was like let me let my lease go so I moved back with my parents I had already lived with my parents so I didn't have like rent and stuff and so I think for me the change was really like mental and packing and making sure I had enough money um people may be wondering but I I mostly use like equity and then I also I had been doing like I was in like a susu which is like island savings it's like pool savings so I had been doing that and then I also had an app called acorns which like you know it automatically takes a certain amount um a, you know out of your paycheck each week and sort of invests it um, and you can you know, pull it out at any point. So I had already been like saving, um, didn't know that this is what I was going to do with the money, but, uh, um, I felt like, you know, this was a good personal investment. So it's like, this is what this money is going to be for. <laughs> That's a really important message. I tell people all the time that like, once you get your money right, like something like this doesn't seem so far away. Like, mm-hmm when you get out of debt and you start saving and you can make those steps, even if they're baby steps every week, all of a sudden you're in a position where it's like, oh, I could take three months off of work. Or, and maybe I will be in hostels the entire time because that's what my budget is, but I don't have to show up and see these people every day. And listen, that for me, that was a moment where I was like, 
I checked my bank like, wait, I don't, I don't have to go to work. Like, what? how did that happen? <laughs> I don't, yeah. I don't have to see these people. And so for like, just having the foresight, even if you don't know what you're saving for, when you start saving and when you start really being more intentional about your money, avenues open for you that you wouldn't have even thought about. And so that's really a blessing. Yeah, I definitely plus one that. And I think that's what's kind of weird when people are like, well, how did you, pre-? or like some, or some of the other bloggers I read, like they intentionally like plan for like, or save for a year, two years. And like, I'm like, I don't really say, like I, it almost was like the money was sitting there. So once the decision was made, I was like, oh yeah, I can do this. So I think that's why I was able to like, the turnaround was like two months or something really quick because it was just like, oh yeah, the budget for that. <laughs> like, let's do this. Uh, so. Um, okay, so you talked about planning part. You talked about like we're living. It was easy to get out of your parents' house. They didn't, you know, make you terminate a lease or anything. Cool. But we also talked a little bit about the conversations you had to have. Were any of those conversations less positive than you expected? Um. Um. No, I mean, my dad, so, so my dad, I thought he had like overheard me talking to a friend about it. So I was like, that's petty. Let me actually tell him. Um, so I was like, um, I'm quitting my job. <laughs> and he was like, well, I hope you have a plan. Or he was like, I hope you have something else lined up. And I was like, don't talk to me like that. Like, I'm like, duh, of course I have a plan. And then I was like, well, I don't have something else lined up in terms of a job, but I have a plan. And then I kind of like I'm going to you know travel Southeast Asia and blah 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 blah. um so you know I have to I set it up like oh I'm gonna do that you know eventually I'm gonna be a travel blogger and I'm gonna turn it into money I'm like you know there's so much money out there to be made via like Instagram and all this stuff and like you know I had to like sell it to him and then he was like okay great um and my mom thought I was joking um when I told her um because like one day she came in my room and she was just like I don't know. She said something like, oh, I thought you changed your mind. I said, mom, my next, my last day of work is next week and my flight is booked. Um, so my parents, I mean, so my mom thought I was joking. I was like, I'm not joking. Um, but everyone else was just like, oh, like, you know, that's awesome. That's dope. Um, yeah, everyone else was just kind of like a cheerleader. Like, we can't wait to see. Like, we can't wait to follow along. Like, that's inspiring. So, um, and I think especially at work and just like, in, I mean, to your point, I think you had said earlier, like people think it's like, you know, it's a lavish thing to do, right? So I think it's something like people want to do or like, but like don't have the kind of balls to, right? Like people are also like really unhappy or really stuck or like love travel and love the photo ops, but they're kind of like, you know, can't even imagine kind of like quitting with no plan or just kind of doing, it's, it's a radical idea. Um, at least I kind of think so. <laughs> um, but so I think it's a radical idea in the in the like uh, mainframe we normally work in. So it's a radical idea in the U.S. to take time mm-hmm. off to be good to yourself. Which, when I say that, sounds crazy to me. <laughs> like it sounds crazy that this is viewed as like weird. Mm-hmm. Because all you're doing is is doing the things you enjoy and the idea that taking time off for yourself to do the things you enjoy is confuses people is Mm -hmm. a lot about where we where we are as like a people in America and a lot of the world so yeah that's very true I I had talked about that um someone I had met in a hostel he was like um from East African country and like spent a lot of time in Thailand and stuff. And he was saying, you know, you don't meet a lot of American backpackers. Like he was saying in other cultures in Europe and around around the world, like people do it. But he was like, Americans, they take short breaks or vacations. But he was like, American culture, you guys are like workaholics. Like you're always working. Um, You guys don't, you know, just kind of backpack or just travel or like, um, and I was like, that's kind of true. And then for me personally, I think like in the black community, it's like even more taboo. Like I'm like, I never met a black person that went like, backpacking around the world um but you know in other communities it can you know it's a little more normative yeah if you had one thing to say to black women in tech what would it be wow one thing to say um i would say like 
you are the sauce and like you deserve to be at the tables that you're at. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of times we, you know, we don't think we deserve to be at the tables or think we need to like, you know, I don't know, walk on eggshells or overperform. It's like you are there for a reason. They need your creativity, they need your talent, they need your ideas. Um, and also like this is petty, but like milk all of the benefits. <laughs> like there are so many of them. And like we don't be knowing, we don't be re- read, get every benefit use the pto benefit the fitness benefit the i don't know the do it all like the company manual get all the benefits um before i left like three or four months before i left i knew i was leaving because they'd announced the layoffs um a while before that but in the last four months i got my eggs frozen do i want to have kids i don't know but if I do, I have some frozen eggs because they were paying for it all. And I was like, so my only responsibility is injecting myself with hormones. So I don't want to do that. But this is like, like the service they went to was like, it felt like a $20,000 service. I don't know what it was. Mm-hmm. I did two cycles of it because like, if you gonna pay for it and I never have to think about whether right. I, right? Like, go ahead and pay for it. I was like, do I want kids? Who knows? Right, but you'll have the option. Yes. Listen. Okay. Yeah. Listen, all that stuff is a part of compensation, right? It's like, it's not just about the base salary. It's about what are all the other perks that's coming with it? Because I'm utilizing all of them. <laughs> even the things where I'm like, I don't even know, but I'm going to take it. I'm going to take this. Um, okay. So you mentioned earlier that you were able to bring your whole self to work. I think a lot of black women are scared to do that because they don't want to be judged for their whole self in uh, in an environment where no one else that's bringing their whole self is bringing it in the way they are. So how did you start feeling comfortable doing that at Uber? I think you find that like when you're doing that, you're performing your best, right? Like I remember I, you know, I used to lead a lot of training, right? And like my, we call them Ubers, like, you know, they, they loved me or like, they like really thrived or like they were becoming like, you know, performing really well, really quickly and stuff. And it's like, I have to, you know, attribute that to like the way I connect with them. Right. Or like the authentic authenticity I brought to any workshop or the classroom. Right. Um, you know, when I think about my management style, right. Like other styles, was it working? Right. Like if you came into a team with trash metrics and then, you know, it meant what was happening before wasn't working, right? And so you have to think like, you know, what am I going to bring that's going to be different? And it's your authenticity. And so I think like, I was always consistently really performing really well. And I'm like, okay, like, I'm going to keep doing this, right? And I'm definitely not going to stop. And then once I was like, I can be me, I was like, oh, great. Like, I'm, I was there with head wraps, with big earrings, with like, whatever, colorful hair, right? And I don't, I don't know, that's a, I don't even know if that's like helpful, but I mean, why not? Everyone else brings their hope. Like they are just them. Why can't we just be us? It's so Bring simple. Like really, sometimes it's awful, but <laughs> but it's all. And maybe that's what it is at tech com- tech companies. It's really about like the data and the metrics. And it's like if I'm performing well, I don't know why you care if I'm wearing a headband. Like I don't know what the correlation between those two things are. Um, so. Okay. I mean, if you want these metrics, you won't let me get a head wrap. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but beyond appearance, beyond head wraps, beyond big hoops, um, did you code switch? Did you feel like, like, were you the exact same person in and out of work? Um, yes. Okay. I think also what kind of helped was, you know, I think finding your tribe um at uber i actually call my friends um we called ourselves uber black because when we kind of started like there wasn't that many black people um, and we i don't know like once you find your tribe um you guys are kind of all going through the same thing right like you know feeling like you know you're the only black person on your team or you know do you need to overperform? do you need to code switch and like i think we were kind of 
like a support group, if you will. Um, and we like validated kind of each other and being like, you know, like, you know, we push us, you know, like push ourselves to like, no, continue to show up and show up in a way that's authenticity and like, no, you are, you know, doing great work. Um, and so I think when you have your tribe, it's easier to continue to show up. Um, you know, like we, we, we used to have a weekly all hands with just us because we were gonna, you know, encourage each other. So I think also like finding your tribe and other people who are also showing up in whichever way it feels authentic for them too can be helpful. So if you are feeling stuck and ready for a pivot, um, I mean, I think like, I, I think, you know, solo travel will just like, it's a really great journey. It'll open up your mind. You'll learn so much about, you know, about yourself. You'll learn to trust yourself. You'll learn, I don't know, it's really a great experience. And I think like we all, like if it's something you want to do, like go for it, right? Um, there are resources out there. There are people who are willing to help. There is a community and like we out here and we need to be out here more. So, um, you know. Thanks for joining me today, Liz. I really appreciate you being so candid about your experience. And I'm hoping that people can learn from you and uh, maybe not make some of the same mistakes you did with the overpacking, but <laughs> like, get into the zone and, and realize that a career break is not a scary thing, but something that you can do with just, you know, a month or two of planning. So yeah. thanks for having me. All right. Thanks and goodbye. <laughs>